Hello there. This week has been another quiet one from Blizzard, with the release of the Cataclysm Classic pre-patch being the only major announcement. Fortunately, there's still plenty else happening in and around the game, so don't worry, we've still got plenty to discuss. This week saw the start of the Northrend Cup Dragon Riding Race series, with Northrend being one of the most magical areas in World of Warcraft, I suspect that I'm not the only person who's been anticipating this event for a while. I haven't completed all of the races yet, but the ones I have tried have been noticeably longer than most of the races we've been accustomed to so far. Fortunately, at least for me, the ones I've tried so far have not been particularly challenging, as they have had decently lenient timers. Reward-wise, the trend of new transmog sets continue with the Icy Drake Racer set, which I think is probably the best-looking set so far. There's also a new tabard and a new title, Northrend Racer. And finally, there's also a cool checkered flag back pennant transmog piece. We also got a brand new trading post this week, which this time continues the spring themed trend. The star of the show for me was the Amber Skitterfly, an orangey recolor of the cool Skitterfly mount. There's also a really cool bow transmog for hunters who fancy a cutesy look. Beyond that, the post is very transmog heavy this week, and that applies to the monthly bonus reward, which is a pair of butterfly wings. Unfortunately, in launch date, the mount was bugged, which meant the players who bought it didn't actually receive the mount, but did still get charged. Fortunately, this was quickly resolved by Blizzard and everybody did get their mount, but it's fair to say that this did cause a bit of anxiety for affected players initially. I was lucky enough to notice a forum post about the issue and was able to delay my purchase until it got fixed. Week 2 of the new Season 4 also continued with a bit of a buggy theme, with issues with legendary items being mysteriously capped at item level 502, and when that was resolved, briefly overcharging for flight stones. While issues like this are pretty annoying and do get a lot of attention when they impact higher numbers of players, I will say that they were at least fixed by Blizzard with commendable speed. Another notable hotfix this week was for the items purchased using the new Antique Bronze Bullion. Players very quickly observed that upgrading these items came with a very high flight stone cost due to the large number of steps, up to 14 in some cases. Fortunately, following feedback, Blizzard have stepped in and halved the cost, which should make upgrading those items a bit easier on all of us. On the subject of discounts, it also turned out that purchasing sockets with the consolation currency from the Great Vault will cost half the usual amount. This means that it's going to be possible to get two sockets from the vault each week if you don't have anything better to take. While this wasn't announced by Blizzard, it's a fairly safe bet that this is for Season 4 only, as it does continue the theme of much faster gearing that we're seeing for what's likely to be a much shorter season than usual. A little bit of sad news that has emerged this week is that Christy Golden, the author of many World of Warcraft books, including the Arthas and Sylvanas books, has parted company with Blizzard. In a public tweet this week, Christy revealed that she had been impacted by the layoffs back in January, but due to some in real life bad news, which I won't go into here, had chosen to take some private time to process things. Christy has worked for Blizzard for over 25 years as part of their story and franchise development team, which provides story support for all of Blizzard's games. For World of Warcraft, as well as numerous books and short stories, Christy also wrote or co-wrote several of the cinematic scripts. There's no doubt that she has had an outsized impact on the game's storyline over the years, and I think that she will be sadly missed. I'll put a link to her announcement in the description down below. Before I move on from the live game, if you haven't yet collected the Fiery Hearthsteed mount, which is a cross-promotion with Hearthstone, this promotion is due to come to an end in May the 14th. Getting the mount just requires that you download and log into Hearthstone. You don't even need to play a game, so this can be done in as little as 10 minutes, depending on your download speeds. Hearthstone is free to play, so there's really no reason not to go ahead and snag that mount. While I'm on the subject of reminders, this coming week maps the release of patch 1027 Darkheart and Blizzard have released a short cinematic which provides a bit of a setup for the main storyline of the new patch. I'm not going to conclude the cinematic here as it obviously has a lot of story spoilers, but I will put a link to it down in the description. 
This release will include a bunch of story related content including Troll and Draenei heritage armor, but if you're looking forward to Remix Mists of Medaria, that's going to come just over a week later with a global release on May the 16th. This coming Monday, I will be releasing my full preview and survival guide for the new patch, which will provide a bunch of info on what is going to go live and when, along with covering a few hidden gems that are due to drop. If you're not already a subscriber, do make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as this video goes live. Over in the classic front, and this week saw the launch of the Cataclysm Classic pre-patch. The Cataclysm pre-patch brings the Goblin and Worgen races to Classic along with updates to the Eastern Kingdoms and Calamore with the revived 1-60 levelling experience. This brings the old world and Classic in line with the modern game and means that the only way to experience the original vanilla version of the zones is now in Classic era, Hardcore and Season of Discovery servers. The pre-patch also brings in the archaeology profession and the transmog system to Classic. While I don't plan to actively play Cataclysm Classic, as most of the content is available in the modern game, this is going to be very interesting to follow and watch how this version of the game plays out. For many players, Cataclysm marked the end of the old school style of World of Warcraft. I've no doubt that it will have its nostalgic attraction, especially for players who started in Cataclysm, but I really do wonder if it will get the level of interest and staying power that its predecessors managed to drum up. With Season of Discovery getting such of a focus in the imaginations of classic players, it also faces a level of strong competition for player attention that I think the previous versions didn't have to face. I know that many players are already looking forward to the idea of Mist of Pandaria Classic. I just wonder if Kata will generate enough numbers wise to justify Blizzard keeping this particular thread going. But what about you? Are you going to be playing Cataclysm Classic or have you seen it all before? Let me know in the comments down below. On the subject of Season of Discovery and things have been a bit in the quiet side news wise this week but we did get some tuning buffs for Hunters, Shamans and Warlocks to get their teeth into. Details on screen now. Moving on to PTR Watch, which is where I cover the news from both the Alphas and the PTR, along with data mining news and content creator So So Breezy did some testing of the BFA Battle of the Zaralor raid on the 927 PTR. So found that the raid appears to have had some changes to make it easier to solo, including the removal of the 99 damage reduction in the Queen's Court encounter. Now not all of the raids were testable on the PTR so it's impossible to say how extensive these changes are but I'm very hopeful that this means that Blizzard has done a full pass over BFA raids to ensure that they are soloable. A similar pass was done on the Legion raids in patch 915 so I think it's fairly likely that this is the case. Albeit in the absence of any announcement for Blizzard it's not possible to be certain until the new patch goes live. Over on the War Within Alpha and we're now into the third week of testing and this week it's the turn of the third new zone Hallowfall along with the Dawnbreaker and Priory of Sacred Flame Dungeons. I'm not going to be reporting very much on the new zone testing as it does tend to involve some pretty major story spoilers which I prefer to avoid here but there was also a few interesting gameplay updates this week. When the Ward Bands feature was announced, Blizzard originally said that class sets would not be included in the ability to learn transmogs that your character could not actually use. However, with this week's update, Blizzard have announced that following feedback, they have decided to remove this restriction and that legacy class set tokens will now be Warbound. In the War Within, this will apply to Shadowlands raids and before. They did say that for current content the restrictions are going to remain in place due to how powerful the class sets can be for players. We also got another set of Hilo talents to dig through. We got Arcane for Holy and Shadow Priests and Fatebound for Assassination and Outlaw Rogues. There's also some ma pretty major spec overhauls for Arcane Mage, Retribution Paladin, Affliction and Demonology Warlock and Arms and Fury Warrior. The scale of these updates are a bit beyond the scope of a news video but I will put a link to the release notes down in the description below for you to go through them. 
Engineers also get the launch of the War Within version of the specialization, and it comes with a new recipe acquisition system called Inventing. When crafting, engineers will have a chance to get a prototype item that they can then use to discover some new recipes. One interesting discovery that has come out of the alpha testing is that when you complete a quest which rewards gear or weapons, it now results in earning all the appearances for all armor and weapon types, and not just those for the character you happen to be on. On live, currently when you do a quest with a gear reward, you'll typically only get the item you can use. For example, plate users will get a plate item and cloth wearers a cloth item. But under the new system, while you still only get the item you can use, the appearances of the other types of items are automatically added to your appearance collection for use by all, any of the alts which can use it. Well, that's all the news for this week. If you found this video even vaguely useful, please do let both me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon. And if you forgot earlier, now's a great time to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever a new video goes live. I release my weekly news updates on Saturdays at 5pm UK time and I also regularly release guides, previews and review videos through the week so there's plenty more content coming real soon now. That's all for now, thanks for watching.